UAVs are an incredible technology. They're uh, flying robots, and it's, uh, it's getting to a point now where we can actually start to do work with these robots because we have inexpensive sensors, uh, inexpensive autopilots. Uh, due to the revolution that happened here, uh, the revolution that happened in our pocket, which is cheap sensors, uh, very, very smart processing, uh, we're now able to have something like this, which is a $200 universal autopilot. Um, this is a Pixhawk made by 3D Robotics. Uh, what it can do is incredible. You can put this on any aircraft, a fixed wing, a multi-rotor, and a rover It works on some boats, and you can control it to do a variety of tasks, both uh, just general stabilization of the aircraft and uh, waypoint control, and then higher level control on top of that. So. Uh, one area that 3D Robotics is interested in working in is uh, now that we have these inexpensive autopilots out there, what can we actually do with it? And the vast majority of the time that people use these aircraft, whether it be in um, surfing videos or in industrial applications like agricultural survey, construction survey work, uh, search and rescue applications, almost all the time, maybe 80% of the time, the sensor is a camera. And what the camera sees is uh, not exactly what the, what the aircraft sees, because the aircraft, in the case of a fixed wing aircraft, it's going to be over here. And if it banks, it's going to start to look at something on the side over here. And especially if there's some topology to the ground, if the ground is rolling hills or mountains or whatever, actually the, the mapping between what the aircraft, where the aircraft is in space and what it's looking at is, uh, is not exactly straightforward. And then you have to take into account things like the camera, the lens distortions. And you can maybe even take into account atmospheric distortions if it's flying very high. To answer the question, what does my camera see, is incredibly important, especially if you want to start to do things like optimize where the aircraft flies so that it takes the right kind of images, collects the right kind of video. Uh, if we think about a, a, a sensing task that one might want to do if they're, say, following a surfer. So, Every surfer in the world has a GoPro camera, and they want to take really cool pictures of themselves uh, from, from the surf, but also from the air. It's a great problem. Um, <clears throat> and this is video that I'm talking about as opposed to stills. So how, how do we control the aircraft so that we get the best video possible? Well, unfortunately, we're not at a point where I can just tell the autopilot, hey, go collect the best, best video possible. We have to do a bunch of things. First, we have to solve the problem of where is the surfer, where is the aircraft, and then where is the camera pointed? Let's assume we can do all of that. Let's assume we know where the surfer is because they're wearing a GPS beacon or because we're using computer vision. Let's assume that we know where the aircraft is because it's flying one of these and it knows exactly where it is very precisely. Might even have DGPS and know, and know where itself is down to submeter accuracy. So we know where the, the, the target is, uh, the thing that we want to video, and we know where the aircraft is. How do we now tell it, okay, plan a path for optimal video collection. We have to define a whole set of parameters that, um, that explain what is good video. And we might even have to calculate in real time some, some, uh, some second level or third level parameters about the quality of the video. So you might think of, example, for example, you say, make sure that the subject is in the field of view 80% of the time, and the other 20% of the time, make sure you're panning around the subject and they're obliquely in the field of view or they're in the field of view from overhead. So you can start to think about how do we make a prescriptive uh, procedure for what defines good video. And of, of course, it's a very abstract question because you look at the wealth of videos out there on YouTube and it's not straightforward what makes a good video. Um, there's tons of research in artificial intelligence that actually looks at videos and tries to abstract out of the videos, what is it about these that makes, them, that makes them good or makes them whatever it is that they are. But even if we define the task very simply, we have a subject and we want to put it in the field of view, in the center of the field of view all the time. We want to take that and we want to actually have the aircraft fly itself so as to do that. It's actually not a straightforward problem and this is things that 3D Robotics is working on. How do we exactly move the aircraft around? How do we plan paths uh, in the camera space? And how do we transpose those into the aircraft space so that we can fly to optimally look at, at some particular area? That's the video application. I think that's harder and easier in some ways than the still image application. Uh, so now we could think of something where the object isn't moving. It's not a surfer. It's, it's a farm. 
or it's a construction site. Maybe it has, maybe it's rolling hills and it's a cattle ranch, and we want to survey this area. So one thing that we can do that, that's happening all the time right now is we can say, okay, well, I know that I want to survey this area, and I want to take images at exactly this interval, and I want to, they need to have a certain amount of overlap in them because I have some image processing software, some stitching software that's going to mosaic those images, and I know I need 50% of overlap, that's a heuristic, so I'm just going to plan a path that allows me to get 50% overlap. Okay, great. That's a, that's a very open loop path planning method. What, uh, what's actually important to do, though, is to take into account the fact that small aircraft, especially, are not going to fly exactly the path that you tell them to. Uh, especially for fixed wing aircraft, which are going to be very susceptible to the wind, they're going to roll and they're going to bank and they're going to yaw. So what you really need to do is look at the problem from a control for sensing point of view. How do I control my aircraft so that I maximize image quality? Again, just like in the surfer example, we have to define a set of characteristics of what is, what is a good image. So a good image might be uh, flat, 50% uh, overlap with the previous image, greater, greater than or equal to 50% overlap, and looking at, uh, looking at the, the scene from exactly a particular angle, maybe straight down, maybe obliquely in the case of a 3D reconstruction. So we take all those, those different uh, kind of high-level parameters and we put that into some sort of path planner that's going to generate for us an optimal path for flying this particular, this particular sensing mission. We can do that in an offline fashion if we know all of, the, um, all of the different features of the topography. But in a lot of cases, we might not know that. What would be great is I just throw my aircraft off, it takes off, and it figures out what the topology of the area is as, as it flies. So then you have a much harder computationally pro computational problem because in real time, we need to have some metric of how good the reconstruction is. Reconst 3D reconstruction from still imagery is typically a very computationally intense process. It uses algorithms in the structure from motion class of algorithms, and it's, it's doing this reconstruction based on multiple observations of the same point. So we have to figure out where the aircraft is again. We have to figure out points on the ground, common points. We have to start doing a reconstruction, maybe. And then we have to say, OK, you covered this area. You didn't cover this area sufficiently. What even amounts to sufficient coverage? And how do I fly my aircraft so that I actually maximize coverage up to a, you know, some threshold of some kind? That's a really hard computation problem, I think. And um, I think it's a great area of research. And it's super important for any application where, um, where we actually need to go out to a farm or some very large tract of land and we don't know about it, what we do know is that we want to collect good images of that area and we know what, how to define good imagery. So from end to end, uh, what, what's interesting about these problems is it's actually the technology is being driven by very, very simple human requests. Human request is take really good video of me. The human request is take, uh, make, a, make a 3D mosaic of this particular area and make sure it has less than a centimeter per pixel ground resolution over the entire map and a variance, um, mean and variance of any point of you know, less than five meters or something like that. That's something that a human might say, a surveyor might say, and we need to start thinking about how do we construct efficient planning algorithms so we can do this type of path planning in real time so that we collect the right images in the first place. Uh, it's, a, it's a closed loop path planning problem. Um, it's very hard, especially in the case that it involves real time computation of, of the images to figure out how good we're doing in flight. And uh, it's an active area of research.